In 2008, after seeing Peter Neuenbacher, the owner and founder of Salomoni, demonstrate note manipulation, I always wondered, what would it take to remove an instrument from a stereo file? The thought was simple. Since we now can access harmonic frequencies of a particular note, what if we knew a harmonic frequency of an instrument? For instance, knowing the harmonic frequencies of a bass guitar, we can isolate that within a spectrum of notes. Now, while you could do this in Melodyne Create, there was still a little bit of problem. You see, most instruments, including the human voice, share similar frequencies. With that bass guitar we isolated, we also picked up lower register piano as it shared the same frequencies. But still, with some patience and careful crafting, you can manipulate pre-existing audio. Then in 2010, a product called Hit and Mix allowed you to take pre-existing loops and unmix them. 2016, AccuSonus's Regroover allowed you to do a similar thing. The following year, Isotope's RX hits the market, further pushing the envelope of removing and enhancing harmonic frequencies. It just seemed like we were on the verge of a breakthrough. In all honesty, music software companies have been at the forefront of AI technology. I would say probably from 2001, they've been creating algorithms for the detection of harmonic frequencies. And as the development in AI began to flourish, we've seen the reflection in music software. From automatic key detection, to chord and melody generation, even vocal generation became a tool of use. So it was only a matter of time what I thought would be impossible would become possible. Fast forward to 2019, Hit and Mix is now the name of the company and been at the forefront of development for almost two decades. They released Infinity, the predecessor of Ripex Deep Remix, Deep Audio, and now Ripex DAW. The software allowed you to manipulate audio much like Salomone's Melodyne. Coincidentally, the Ripex Audio algorithm could be found in online and native software as a remixing tool. But it wasn't until Serato released Stem Separation in their popular DJ software in 2022 that the DJ community started to take notice. Not long after that, they released it in their production software and all of a sudden, producers had a new tool to play with. Since then, we've seen it show up in DAW Heavyweight's FL Studio, Ripex go from a plug-in to a complete DAW, and barring any delays, sometime shortly we'll see it in the MPC 2.0 software. But for the MPC users, is it worth the wait? Other than Akon's digital remix, MPC Stems, I've used stem separation in Ripex's Deep Create, FL Studio, and Serato Sample. And as an owner of an MPC Live, I can tell you some of those stem separations had ended up in my production on the hardware. Now I can tell you none of these softwares are free from artifacts, but as the technology gets better, at some point we are going to reach studio session quality. The only question is, who will get us there first? At the core of stem separation is the ability to isolate vocals, drums, bass, melody, which can be further broken down into guitar or piano and other instruments along that line. Advanced software like Ripex, however, not only allows you to play the audio as if it were MIDI, but also allows you to add effects in real time. The quality of stems that it produces I would slightly put ahead of FL Studio and Serato Sample. And it's not to say those programs are any slouches either. It's really gonna depend on your workflow and the outcome that you desire. I have yet to use MPC stems to see how it stacks up compared to the others. But with that being said, am I really missing out on anything? I say that to say this, I have not traveled with my MPC Live ever since the COVID lockdowns. And I rarely use it outside my studio. For the most part, I use it in conjunction with the 2.0 software, where I have access to all my VSTs, Serato Sample and RipX being among them. In fact, I would argue the implementation of VST 3.0 and a more flexible MIDI routing would be a more viable option for me when using the MPC 2.0 software. Slated to be released sometime in March, with the standalone version to follow after that, or maybe the delay is for the simultaneous release. Either way, if there's ever time that I would need to use the MPC stems, it would be in standalone mode. I recently posted a video of myself chilling in my living room, 
with my MPC Live, my PT-01, and a carton of 45s. It would have been awesome if I could have stemmed out some of those samples. So you tell me, do you have a need for stem separation in your production? Are you currently using stem separation in your production? If you're an MPC owner of hardware or software, are you waiting for the MPC stems? I would like to thank my sponsors, Plugins Canada, where you can find a wide range of music software and hardware. 